and welcome to a cup of conversation on BRT TV. My name is Jan Gazi and I'm your host this evening once again. And I'd like to welcome you all to another special program. On the show today, I have a lovely lady. I've known her for about 25 years. We all know her, Hilary Jamal. She is a long time resident in the TRNC and she used to write a column for Cyprus Today, Dining Out with Hilary Jamal. Now, Hilary and her husband, Fiklet, had a very, very happy life here and unfortunately, Fiklet died two years ago in 2018 at the age of 97, a long, long life. Now, during his life, he had many experiences and he narrated these experiences to another old friend, another expat, Michael Rain, who unfortunately passed away a few years ago. Michael Rain had chats weekly with Fiklet at their home in the Guinea area and Hilary Jamal found the manuscripts. It would have been a shame to let them go by, she said. We'll find out more from Hilary in a minute. And the book has arrived. The manuscript from Michael Rain is now Fikret, Portrait of Life by Fikret and Hilary Jamal. And the book launch is very, very soon. Hilary is my guest on A Cup of Conversation. First of all, Hilary, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's been a long, long time since we last met. More than three and five years. It's more. Yes. A long, long time. A long, long time. Mm. It's great to see you again here at BRT. Thank you. Looking fabulous, looking very Thank well. Thank you. And let's go back, before we start talking about the book, about Fikret, let's go back to the beginning. Now, you are originally from the UK, is that right? Or where are you from originally? Uh, the UK, but um, I was living in the States before that, um, before I came here. Yes. I was married and living in the States. My first husband was American. So you left the UK, went to America, got married there. Right. And then... No, I got married in England. In England? <laughs> yes, yes. Right. Mm. Then went to America. Then went to America. My mother and father insisted I go and see America before we got married, so I did that. Yeah, I did. <laughs> How many years did you live in America, Hilary? 19, I think. Long time. And then, as we know in the book, you met Fiklet in Cyprus. Right. What's your, what was your link to Cyprus? Well, that's... I think I go into that in the book. It's, um, we had some friends from Cyprus staying with us in New York, and they showed us photographs of their house in Ambalia. And the, on the wall of, of their photograph was an a, a abstract painting by Vivian Guthrie, Deirdre Guthrie's mother. And I was doing children's portraits at that time. And I was feeling a bit stuck in a groove. And I liked that abstract. And I, it, it all evolved that I corresponded with Vivian and that's why I came to, to, to work with her for a month and learn her technique. <laughs> and the funny thing is, when you arrived on the island of Cyprus, meeting you at the airport was Fiklet. He was sent to pick you up, wasn't he? He was. They asked him to meet me because they, were, they couldn't get, come to the airport. So, and he was there anyway because that was his job. And he was literally the first person I met when I got off the aeroplane. Well, we find out what happened next in the book because mm -hmm. uh, it's all in there, all his, mm -hmm. his life story, Fikret's life story. But I want to come back to you. Hilary, uh, you are, as you said, also an artist. Yeah. And you also wrote for Cyprus Day, didn't you? Dining out in North Cyprus. I remember this, I remember interviewing you about this first book that you ever wrote. That was the very first. The, the second two were half that size. Yeah. They were Neater. <laughs> they were neater. Yes. But this is your picture. All the pictures yes. in here are yours, aren't yes. they? Yes. I remember... Um, Actually, before that, I did court drawings for Kibris. Because, you know, camera can't go into court. Yes. So I, I was doing that. That was my first touch with the newspapers. And from that, you became a restaurant reviewer. Yes. In the, in the newspaper, a weekly column, which then became a book. And uh, this is, I mean, a fantastic uh, book that uh, was edited by Joel Fraser, the then editor of Cyprus Today newspaper, illustrated by yourself. Fantastic 
artwork within the book. I remember, I kept this all these years. I brought this out for the interview today. It's a fantastic guidebook uh, for restaurants. I did it, that for 12 or 13 years, I think. Amazing. It was, it was fun. We had a lot of fun doing it. And you used to go to the restaurant, you and Ficklet. Yes, we did it every week. We went, and if we were going away, we had to do it in advance, you know, and send it. It was before I had internet or anything like that. I of course, typed it yeah. Out and Fikret, uh corrected my spelling <laughs> and my syntax because um, his English was better than mine. It was so so good. And um, then I had to type it out again and bring it in all before internet. It was a long story. And to keep that going for 12, 13 years, mm. it was amazing. But you had a good time. We did, we did. I'm sure you got to see lots of different places. And met a lot of people. It was great. It was yeah. Great. And I remember coming to your house, I think, for the interview, either for this book or maybe for maybe, the second book. Maybe, yeah. I can't remember now which book I interviewed you for, but I remember your house. I remember mm. meeting you and Ficklet sitting mm. outside in your balcony. Without with animals. A, yes. <laughs> Lots of animals. Lots of animals and a lovely view of yeah. Guinea yeah. below us, mm -hmm. the Mediterranean Sea. All of a sudden I heard that you have a book about Ficklet, your lovely husband. And this book is all about him, his life, it, Which is quite an interesting life, really. Very interesting life. Because it, it goes from very simple days right through quite a sophisticated life and his whole contact with the British community and all. Yes. It was interesting. It's a very interesting insight. I've read the book. It's a very easy read. Lots of information there. Very, very interesting book. It's all about life and how he saw it, very uh, expat view, I mm. think. Even though he was a Turkish Cypriot, he, hang, he went to very different, many different places where the expat community he were out. He was very involved with the British yes. community. Yes. Because of, maybe because of the way he looked. I don't know, he looked like a diplomat, rather. <laughs> he did, didn't he? And here he is here, we have a photograph as well. Very, very uh, charismatic young man mm. that he was back then when you met. Now? As you say in the book, another famous character, Michael Rain, who unfortunately passed away, he came to your house and it says here that uh, he encouraged Fikret to share his life story and for helping him to write this record of his life. You thank uh, Michael Rain posthumously for his help. Well, how did that happen? How did that come about? Whose idea was it to speak with Fikret well, about this? He was, Michael was a great friend. We played bridge and we had dinner all that sort of thing. And this was from bits he heard about Fikret's life. He thought it was worth recording and well worth recording. So he persuaded him to put it down. Yeah. And, and he put it down on paper. So Michael came to your house once a week, most mm -hmm. of the time, mm -hmm. having tea and coffee and biscuits mm -hmm. with you and chatting and, and you know, recording what Fikret was saying. Sometimes he recorded. Some, mostly he took notes. Mm -hmm. Making notes, was the aim eventually to make a, a book? I, su was the I suppose. Yeah. I, I never really analysed it at that period. You never know. thought mm. what would happen. But then of course when I was left, sorry I'm jumping ahead, with these notes, I realised I needed to do something. But it was at least a year after Fikret died and quite a few after Michael died that I actually had the courage to, to do something about it because a pile of books was sitting, a pile of manuscripts, notes were sitting there. Yeah. And it, a tremendous job of sorting out and, and, and cl uh, collating. That uh, must be very difficult. A big job, yes. A, a very, very big job because like I said, the book is very easy to read uh, in chapters about his life, you know, chronological order, obviously. So to select the best bits or the bits that you think were interesting enough to include into a book must have been a very big task for you. And put it in order. Yeah. Dates, and it was all a bit higgledy pickledy. Uh, so it had to be put together. And I had no idea when I, I faced up to doing it that what it would involve and it involved a lot. 
Exactly. So who encouraged you to write the book? I know you had help with the with you actually putting the book together, didn't you? You had a great, help. Great. Well, she became a great friend. She very sweetly volunteered at a lunch in the summer before. Uh, she said she had a few a bit of spare time, and she'd be willing to help me. And of course, I didn't even realise that it had to be put on the internet and all this. So she was tremendous help. Yeah. I would never have managed it without her, because yeah. she edited and sorted everything. She did a very good job mm. uh, helping you out, helping you to write this book, and, and uh, it is a lot of hard work. I mean, you don't start... realize you don't realize how much work it is, and when you just see it like that, but it was. You, you don't realize, no, and I mean. Uh, it really is uh, a mammoth task. I mean, Ingrid did a, a great job, but yeah. you go from boyhood, adolescence, to uh, the Second World War, troubles, University, risque. University in, Fri in Beirut. Yeah. I mean, lots yeah. of interesting things. Thea had a very interesting life, and in fact, I mean, going to personal things, uh, you were his third wife, weren't you? That's right. Yes. And his final love, his big love. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, of yeah. course, of course, of course. And you promised each other to be together for a long time, and you said, you know, he gave you good innings. At the age of 97, he passed away, so it was a good life that he had. He promised to stay as long as he possibly could for you. Yeah, him. and he did. And he did, he did. Indeed, yeah. When you look back on these notes, I asked you before, did you find out anything that you didn't know about Ficret? No, not really. <laughs> I think I think I knew it all. And, and you think you know more that there is yes. that it hasn't <laughs> been told. So. Maybe there could be a second book. Who knows? No, I don't know about that. <laughs> but it, was it was it good for you after him passing was, away to go through all these notes it was and to look? Cardic. That was that's the word. A yeah. Big word yeah. for me. I think once once it was done. You know, I could move on, but it had to, I had to get it sorted, sorted out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, uh, quite cathartic. That's a very good word. Yes. I don't quite know what it means, but it, it says it all, I think. Yeah. It's not easy, especially after him passing away, to, to read those memories the way he sees it. That's I mean, why. it's a really nice mm. uh, book, mm. very very poignant, some of the things that he says, uh, in a very light-hearted way. He's never dull, he's never sad. Whatever happened in his life, he's always very positive and moves on, doesn't he? And he doesn't make a lot of criticism of, thing, of, no. of, of the political situation or anything. No. He just makes his own observations, um, which is quite amazing, really, with, with all the things that were happening. Yeah. Mm. And the people, like you said, he, he maybe looked British or English, so he often circulised in those areas where the British people hung out. And it's quite a nice time to go back to, that, that era uh, that he went back to when he was talking about his life. Um, Cyprus or Guinea, in particular, of a, of a yesteryear yeah, that I, we don't have now. And I don't think that period was written about very much. Maybe it will be more and more, mm. but uh, it was a sort of a gap yes. in between independence and whatever. Yeah, yeah. Since. Um, it was a very interesting time. It was a lovely time, actually, to be living in. It was yeah. a great time. We had a super life then, and things have changed a lot. Things have changed. I think it's actually, I mean, he wrote, there's one pa passage, one chapter, risque, and actually your meeting was a bit risque, wasn't it, really? Because, oh. <laughs> <laughs> because you were married, you had your husband in America, you came to Cyprus uh, on an artistic trip, mm -hmm. you met Figlet, who was divorced from his second wife, mm -hmm. and was it love at first sight, do you think? No, it took, took time. It took time? Yes. I mean, I mean, it's difficult to rearrange all so many lives. Yeah. Uh, and I went back to the States for a year before I came back. And when I came back to Istanbul, um, I checked in wrong in New York, for, did something wrong, and my luggage went to Hong Kong. Oh. 
So we were stuck in Istanbul. We were staying at the Pera Palace, which was quite nice, but I had no luggage. <laughs> It came back from Hong Kong eventually. Yeah. No, nothing was missing, which was great. <laughs> very interesting. I mean, you know, all these things, all the little stories that come up here, uh, very endearing. And of course, at the end of the day, uh, you left America, you left your husband, and you settled down with Fikret here in Cyprus. Well, the idea had been originally that uh, it would be a good pied à terre because his business, my husband's business, dealings were in the mid Middle East. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we thought it would be quite a good place to have a base, you know, for traveling. So that's how it started. I did buy a house in Ambalia. And then it went on from there. <laughs> and so you had a very, very happy life in uh, Cyprus, even though he had children from his previous marriages and you have children from uh, your first husband, uh, you both settled down here. What was life l like living with Fikret? I mean, you, you know, we know his point of view, we know how he felt mm -hmm. with you, but what was, do you agree with all the things that he says here? Do you feel the same things that he felt? Oh, very much so, really, because he was still involved with customs when we mm -hmm. got, and we went on some interesting trips to Turkey and things like that, which was interesting. And I, I found that very interesting. And of course, we were still, I was still make, touching base in the States and UK. So we were doing an awful, when I read that, I realized how much traveling we did. Tremendous amount of backwards and forwards. Yeah. Because of children and all the rest of it, you know. So mm -hmm. It was complicated <laughs> to get organized. But we did. and. Um, in fact, Fikret's daughter and her husband, by his second marriage, um, they're coming for Easter this year, which is nice. Very nice. It's lovely. Very good. What do they think? Have you got feedback from them? Have the children, have his children, have your children I, I've, read the book? I've sent the book to all of them. Yeah. 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 And I, yes, I have had very nice fe feedback. Oh, sweet. <laughs> They were very polite. <laughs> of course, well, it's, a, it's a fantastic book. I just want to um, share uh, a little bit because you've got some photographs, obviously from Fikret's archives, your own archives, and also paintings. For instance, um, yeah. are the paintings your paintings? Yes, in the book? they are. I just gave the, 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 the two, uh, I think they're Austrian or German, the guys who, who who published it, mm -hmm. who also did Deirdre Guthrie's father's book, A Bell in Bella mm -hmm. I just gave him a pile of paintings and photographs and drawings, and he chose whatever he put in there. I didn't have any say, really. Oh, oh. And then he returned them to me afterwards. So yeah. it, it's quite interesting. We kept the, we, I did say, I did think it was a good idea that they, they were all black and white. So they married in with the photographs, yeah. you know, so it was mm -hmm. no, no color. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is a, a nice mm. uh, photograph, uh, black and white. I think it's nice to have photographs to show, you know, to, to illustrate yeah. life at the time. And, uh, you know, you've, you've got a really good archive. And it must have been very difficult to choose what to put in, what not to put in. Well, as I say, he, I didn't choose them. I just gave him a but, pile. But you had, yeah, you had, I mean, but mm -hmm. even from that, even to make that pile must have been quite difficult to yeah. see what you wanted to, yeah. to give. I mean, at the end of the day, yes, they, they, you know, the people who made the book chose the photographs or the prints, but you had to choose from whatever you had. Yes. And that must have been quite difficult as well. From the early days, it was mm -hmm. a thin amount of photographs. When uh, you wrote this book, do you think now it's, you know, you say it was cathartic. Is it closure now for you uh, that, you know, you've done this? Uh, is, it, is this your homage now to Fikret? Really, I suppose it is. But I'd have, and I'd have felt badly if I hadn't done it because it was there, you know, yeah. this pile. Especially for Fikret and for Michael Rain, who spent all those exactly, hours because making notes and recording Fikret mm, as well. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, he died so suddenly, Michael. Mm, um, yes. I Unexpectedly. Yes, suddenly. And we were expecting him back. 
He went every summer because he hated the hot weather. Yeah, so he went to Scotland, didn't he? He went to Scotland. He had a, he bought a house there and they found him in his chair. Yeah, I remember, I remember. Michael Rain was a, a very... Uh, he did some articles for the newspapers, didn't yeah. he, too? He, he did some music criticisms and things yeah. like that. Well, he was a, a, an actor as well, wasn't he? An actor. Oh, he was brilliant. He was a brilliant... Uh, oh, he was brilliant. ...performer, mm. a very much... Very well respected person in our community. Rather trained he was. Yeah. yeah. So you're very lucky to have that relationship, uh, that friendship with yes. Michael, to be able to have. Could you have written this, do you think? Or you couldn't have written no. this? No. You wouldn't have. And no, and his, his English is so good. I mean, he, he's written it very well, I yeah. think. It's, it's re as you say, it's readable. Very easy mm. readable. So you, you made no changes to the to the actual script no, itself. No, no, that was Michael, and he 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 was he wrote quite a few. Mostly, um, he he was always writing or painting. He was he was a real yeah uh, real artist. Yes, and he had several books um, printed by I think I'm not sure, but on on um, the internet, you know. Thrillers, that kind yeah. of thing. Excellent. Mm. I know that you have a book launch coming up now. Oh, yes. You're going to be signing this book for anyone who's interested. And this will be at the Karakum Best Bookshop, yeah? Right, next week. On That's the on 20th. Friday the 20th at half March. past 11 to 1 o'clock. Coffee, tea, wine and nibbles. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah. So hopefully... I hope people come. Be nice. They will. Mm. Your friends, those mm. who want to find out more about Thicknet will be there. Mm -hmm. So th it'll be a lovely event. I that's the so. 20th of March or Friday at the Karakum Bookstore. And uh, that's the bookseller uh, bookshop in Karakum. From 11.30 till about 1. Mm -hmm. And everyone's invited to come and uh, meet with the lovely Hilary Jamal. Uh, amazing. But do you, do you miss writing yourself? I mean, do you miss... Well, funnily enough, I do belong to a book club still. Yeah. We, we review a book every month, which is great. I love it. And uh, I, I was at a meeting last week or the week before, and I told all those friends, so hopefully they'll be coming, I hope so, um, to help, to give me some moral support. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be good. I'm sure they'll be yeah. there. And so when uh, the book is launched, the book will be available at the bookshop. Yes. It is will. it also available online, like Amazon? Or haven't, I yet? haven't got you don't that, know that organized yet. I haven't done any, I haven't approached any other bookshops or anything. Just um, the bestseller? So at this moment, that's mm -hmm. where it is, yeah. But maybe, you know, I can, I'll see how it goes, you know. I've never done anything like this. Well, it's a learning curve for everyone, mm. isn't it, I think? Mm. Mm. Uh, who told you, somebody said to you, that this book is so interesting and very valuable that it should be translated into Turkish? I've had that feedback from, yes, but I mean, how, where do we go? <laughs> because, as you said, it's a time, uh, going back, I mean, had Fikret uh, lived, this year he would have been 100. So he goes back to the 1930s, 40s, 50s. Um, as you say, maybe it's a time in history of Cyprus that has been missed or hasn't been looked at in this point of view. So it could be very interesting to have um, in Turkish for the Turkish-speaking people to understand as well. I I, yeah, absolutely. You need somebody bilingual mm. now to come yes, and do your translation. Yes, difficult. I have been told that the archives of that period want, want to have copies of it. And, you know, there, I haven't even started on that kind of publicity yet, but there's a long lot of things to do, a lot of where is to go? I don't know. Well, I think this book should be in everyone's house in Cyprus. I think it's a very interesting mm. read, very, very important to share. I mean, it's his life. It's quite candid, talking about each of his marriages, talking about his life, his university time in Beirut, travelling back and forth. Uh, a very different upbringing to me, Turkish Cypriots, I think. He had a very different mm. upbringing. That's why it was very British. Uh, but, but his actual education was all Cypriot yes. Turkish schools, yeah. and he just was very lucky. He was very gifted. I mean, very he was good gifted. at languages, mm. and he, he even through Beirut, but well, his father took sent him there. But it was all his own 
doing, you know, from... Yeah. Uh, it wasn't... He didn't get involved with the British until after yeah. university. But he had a very different life, I think, to maybe uh, a lot of his peers at the time. I mean, not, not everyone was good at languages. Not everyone was as lucky well, as him. But it was, he was gifted. He was gifted, know. very mm. gifted, mm. very lucky. And it wouldn't have happened otherwise, you know. Were you apprehensive at all about sharing anything that was involved with you? Some of the, the more intimate details about... <laughs> there are some, I'm not going to give away I the know. story. Don't give away the story because you have to get the book to find out more. But it's quite... The, the bit where, you know, your, his relationship with you, there are mm. quite some, you know, candid things there. Were you ever worried about sharing too much, do you think? No, I just... <laughs> it was all written down and I just let it happen, you know. <laughs> I didn't mind. I, I didn't put my thumb down on any of it. I just, just, it was written down. So I, yeah. it was what he said. No, I didn't, I didn't want to censor it. Yeah, you didn't, no, 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 of course not. <laughs> really? No, but I mean, it's not everyone's idea to, to share so much information, mm, that's personal true. information, because it's, it's, it is really interesting. And uh, as I said before, it's an easy read. I mean, uh, I have so many friends have said to me, they started, it picked, they had it and they picked it up in the early evening and started reading, but then they spent the whole night, they couldn't yes. put it down. Yes. Is I mean, it, my colleague Denise Phillips, mm -hmm. who you interviewed uh, by last yeah. week, she gave me the book mm -hmm. to read and she said to me, John, uh, I read it in one night, you know, mm. I couldn't put it down, it was so interesting. And so she lent it to me and I finished it as well very <laughs> easily. Uh, it is a really interesting read, very sim very... Um, it grips you, I think. Yes, it does grip you. You want to know what happens next. Yeah, what's next? Yeah. Even though I know you, yeah. even though, I mean, these photographs, so gorgeous, you're mm. a lovely, charming mm. couple. <laughs> I mean, these photographs uh, really add colour even though they're black and white, to the story. Well, I, I love biographies. I, lo yeah. I love to read history. And somehow it's so important to have the, the odd photographs so you can check the face and see yeah. what the person's like. Yeah, who they're it's, talking about. It's important even. to me as yeah. a reader. Yeah. You know, so. It is very good. And as we said, it's been cathartic for you to, to finally uh, put this all together is this your portrait of yes, yes, Piglet? Yes. I love this one. Yes. This is a, a, a nice... I nearly brought it in, but it's about this big. You, know? you still have it? I, oh, yes, in my living room. It's in your living room. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so you can see all of this and much, much more when you get Figret Portrait of a Life. And it is going to be uh, launched at the Bestseller Bookshop in Karakum on Friday the 20th with Henry Jamal uh, signing the books. Henry, finally, just one question. Uh, what's next for you? Are you, you know, content now that this has happened? Or do you want to continue doing more things to do with literature? Because you have had, uh, you know, a good, long, In innings. <laughs> interesting life. I mean, yeah. even, what about your own personal life story? Would you write your own autobiography or not? Well, people have mentioned that, but I, I don't know. I don't think I've got enough to say. <laughs> I think, you, I think you do, though. I mean, you know, <laughs> growing up in the UK, then going to America, mm. uh, where your family are now, there still your children. I went to England in the last couple of weeks for yeah. my brother's funeral, unfortunately. But my son and his wife came from New York for two days for the funeral, because I, it was, which was wonderful to see them. I couldn't go to their wedding, which was in November because I wasn't well at the time. So right. it was just brilliant for me to, yeah. to see them. So, But I think there's a story in, in <laughs> your uh, mind as well. I think you should start dictating, <laughs> uh, make another book. Mm. But thank you for coming in today, ah. Hilary, and for sharing your story about Secret. Good luck with the book launch thank on you. the 20th of March. Thank you very much. And uh, I hope that Many people will get enjoyment of reading about Fickrett's life. Thank you for sharing his life with everyone. Thank you, sir. So because he could have just been left in a, in a cupboard or in a drawer somewhere forever, getting if, dusty. If, I, if you, I was shy. But, uh, you know, you, you know, you've done a great justice to Fickrett. I'm sure he's you. up there looking down and saying, well done, oh, thank Hillary, you. Thank you. for all that you've done. But thank, thank you for you. sharing this, and oh. I wish you all the best. And uh, see you again soon, I hope. Thank you very much, John. Thank you, thank Hillary. You. <laughs>
And that's it. We've come to the end of a couple of conversation with Hiri Jamal. As I said again, reminding you that you can get this book, Fikvet, A Portrait of a Life, at the best seller bookshops in Guinea, uh, Alstom and Karakum. But the book launch is on the 20th at the Karakum store. And he will be there. Get your copy, have it signed. It's a great read. Mm -hmm. And two minutes again next week for another couple of conversation. Take care. Bye bye. Have you got a time? Thank you.